Good afternoon, class. My name is Paul Shannon. I will be your lead instructor for this afternoon. This class is named Pump Operator at a Glance. It's mentioned to be at a glance because it's a general overview on what you may experience as a pump operator, what the fire ground consists of in terms of getting from station to putting out the fire. In the class, I'm going to be introducing you to two other instructors, which they're not going to do much other than really just assist me in demonstrating what we're going to be doing to, so I can have the ability to talk while they work. Again, you will be needing several things for this class. You will be needing the handout that I gave you earlier, as well as this pumping apparatus driver operator handbook, second edition from the ISSA company. This in conjunction with the stuff that we provided, we have a 2003 dash aerial apparatus. It's a 75 foot stick. We will be uh, using it strictly for just hose deployment, but it can be used as a master stream device. We're going to be going over different tools that you can use, different appliances, now, stuff that you may not be using in today's evolution, but you may see it in the future and we just want to get you familiar with it. Um, we're going to be going over the bunker gear, just so if you come from a small apartment, there is a chance that you will be bunking completely out and getting packed out and pumping the truck, getting to the end of the hose and actually fighting the fire. So in a few moments, we're going to be walking out to the back and I'm going to go over step by step on what we're going to be doing, giving you a step by step, what to expect, this is what we use, etc. Then towards the end of the class, we're going to be doing a full real-time evolution. You're going to watch what it takes from fire station to putting out the fire. And then at the very end of class, we're going to recap and we're going to go over everything we just learned. In just a few moments, we'll be out there. Thank you. Well, class, this brings us to the second part of the uh, instruction for the day. In this part of the demonstration, we're going to be talking about the different types of appliances, talk about hose, talk about different types of tools that we do use and that you may see on the fire scene, or some that you may not see in this particular fire scene, but you may see in the future. We're also going to be talking a little bit, we're going to brush up on bunker gear. Again, this is an entry level class. The different demographic of the people who are going to be taking this class may be different. So for those of you who are the sound professionals in bunker gear, please forgive me. It's only going to take a minute or so. Well, to begin, we're going to be talking about the hose. And the hose, obvious reasons like a garden hose, it's going to deliver water from one source to the other. In different situations, it could deliver water from the hydrant or, or from a static source to the truck and the truck to the fire. Well, we're going to begin talking about the inch and three quarter, inch and a half hose. This is, as a matter of fact, the most common type of hose out there, strictly because this is what a single firefighter can deploy this hose, can fight fire with this line. This is a manageable line to fight. And each one of these hose, hoses have several things in common, but they are quite different as well as you can imagine. Beginning with the couplings. The couplings are, are, do utilize a national standard, and most apartments now do, and it's national hose standard. This is the, to utilize the same type of threads inside. So if you were on a fire scene and you were mutilating, the chances are you could jump onto somebody else's line with your hose or jump on one of their appliances and it still work out. Well, this is a double jacketed cotton hose. What easily managed, easily to, easy to deploy and, and to, and to re-roll up. This hose is not as easy to clean as some of the other hoses we're going to be talking about, but it's quite common. Now we're going to move over to the rubber jacketed hose. This is an inch and a half to inch and three quarter, depends on the truck. This one looks like it, it is an inch and a half. Again, it uses the same size couplings, and in this situation, it's the female, which is the inner threads, which is what receives the water, to the male, 
which is the external threads which delivers the water. The male, typically in a hose roll like this, the male is in the center to protect the threads. So there is our hand line hoses. Now moving on, you see here we have the two and a half and three inch hoses. Again, these share the same size couplings. These couplings are universal, they are the standard. And again, here's the, here's the female, the male's inside. These are the double jacketed cotton hose. These are typically used to supply a truck and at times, master stream devices, they could be utilized as a, as a hand line, as a matter of speaking, but it takes quite a bit more firefighters to manage to be able to fight fire with this line because it flows so much water. It does have quite a bit less friction loss than the inch and three quarter line, but it is, it is kind of a bug to use. Moving on, we have our large diameter hooks. This comes in four inch to five inch variations. This is a different type of connection. This is called a storks connection. This connection is what they refer to as a sexless coupling. Because each coupling can be used on either side, connect to either one, they're exactly the same. Therefore, you don't have to bubble around and say, okay, you know, I got a female, let me deploy the male out, and so forth. These, mat, these large diameter hoses, again, are for master street devices, but they typically use to supply a truck. So, with this type of hose, or any of these hoses, it, once you use the hose, you have to get the water off. Well, that brings us to our next thing. This is a hose squeegee. A hose squeegee is typically a three-man device. It takes one on each side, and as you can probably imagine, Put it on the hose, and again, this is deployed in full of water. One guy grabs here, one firefighter grabs here, and another firefighter actually has to hold the line because you're kind of pulling it, and this is what you use to drain the hose so you can roll it up and get it ready for your next fire and so forth. So that again is the hose squeegee. Right here we have our nozzles. Our nozzles come in a number of different variations. This goes to the inch and a half connection, which is for our hand lines. This, this is typically when a single firefighter is going out. This is a fog nozzle, and this can be deployed by one single firefighter, and it's used to fight in interior operations. And on a side note, you could add a, a foam adapter, and you could deploy foam with it. This is a pistol grip style, whereas this is more of a traditional style fog nozzle. And again, a single firefighter, this one's quite a bit heavier. This is made out of metal. And again, it's got the inch and a half connection to it. And it is for uh, a fog pattern to a straight stream. This is a smooth bore nozzle. Each one of these tips give you a certain and different volume of water, starting off with an inch, going to inch and a quarter. Each one of these tips can be screwed off. And they can be used to uh, give you different volumes of water. This has a two and a half inch connection. This is for the larger hose. Again, typically this takes more firefighters to deploy this line and to fight fire with it. This has got more of a penetrating stream to it. So it's, it's not as impacted by the weather and the surrounding conditions. This is an adapter in a situation where you pull up to a hydrant and the hydrant doesn't have a storks connection. Well, you would get your storks connection and hook it up to a two and a half inch, which is on the side of the hydrants, because not every hydrant has a storks connection. Nowadays, a lot of the newer hydrants do have this connection, but sometimes you do need this. So you, a lot of times they already have this ready to be deployed on the back of the truck. These are spanner wrenches. Typically spanner wrenches, especially this type of connection, they get really tight, they can get snug. You could either tighten them down to stop any kind of water seepage, or again, break the connection free when you're ready to break the hose down and put it back in. Very important to have these with you. Again, this is a spanner for a Storks connection, as you can imagine, the larger size, got different tools with it. Again, you don't need them as much with this, but there are times where it gets a little stuck and you need a spanner to get on. Here we have a gated Y. A 
A to Y has two male connections and one female. And again, as you remember from before, male, the female receives the water, the male gives it out. Or in a situation where you want to split up into two different mass stream devices, this is two and a half inch connection to two two and a halves. You would bring one in and two out. And let's say that this line broke, you could turn it off and put off this. And that's a hose appliance. Over here we have master stream tips. This is not on every truck, but in this truck in particular, it says it is a master stream device. You can hook it up. And again, it's the same concept as the other smooth board. You take off the tips to get more buffer in the water. Then it moves us over to a hydro wrench. Hydro wrench you're going to see on every fire scene because this is what turns on and flows the hydro. In this scenario, this actually has two tips to help you break a coupling free, but overall the center connection that is adjustable is what operates the hydrant. We'll be going over that a little bit later. Now on a, on a fire scene, there are times when you need to shut down the water, but if you have multiple connections coming from a hydrant, you don't want to shut down a whole hydrant to stop the fire operations. So we have here a hose clamp. Again, there's different safety precautions when utilizing this hose clamp, but we're not going to go through that today. But overall, this is what it looks like. It's to be able to pinch off the hose, fix whatever broken line, or just to stop that water from flowing to this line and go to the next one. So again, a hose clamp. Moving on. This is our bunker gear section as I spoke about. We're just going to briefly go over what bunker gear is and how to utilize it. Typically, in a larger department, the driver is not going to bunker out completely because his main job or her main job <coughs> is strictly to flow and pump the truck. But in a small department like ours, we can begin operations pumping the truck, then get to the end of the line and fight fire, then perform an overhaul and repack the truck and go home. Well, we're going to begin. We're going to go from the bottom up. Here are your fire boots. These are obviously are fire retardant. They have protective bottom linings to try to ensure that your, uh, nothing penetrates the bottom and embraces your foot. Here's the bulk coat. This has an inner lining and an outer lining. The outer lining is more of the water resistant type nature, and the inside is for to keep the ambient heat out. Bumper pants. Again, these have a strap, and these are the same level, the same layers as the coat, but these have suspenders to hold it up. Very simple stuff. It's firefighting 101, and of course, gloves and a helmet. So, we are going to conclude on that. And in just a few minutes, we're going to begin going over the truck going over what we're going to do, and this stuff is very important that you know. Every firefighting operation is going to utilize some of these toys, some of these toys to me, tools for everybody else. So now we're going to move on to showing you the truck, showing you what we're going to do, and then we're going to do it, then we're going to recap, and then we're all going to smile and go home. Thank you very much.